Okay, so I have my sending unit on the bench here, and I hope the view is okay. It's on this really awesome red bath towel. Um, I'm going to be doing the Racetronics install. This is the performance or mild performance or um, whatever they consider. Uh, anyway, it's enough. It'll be plenty for me. I don't, I don't know exactly. No, it's not the base one. It's not like the stock replacement. It's the one up. Um, looks like a pretty nice kit. It came with, uh, you know, everything's wired. I, I think I have to remove a couple pins out of that plug and slip them into this plug or something like that. Anyway, I have no idea what I'm doing is what I'm trying to say. So we have the instructions, nice color instructions, which don't seem to 100% match my sender. Like, uh, you know, they're talking about a big uh, seal. Maybe that should have came out of my tank. I'm not sure, but um, anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to do this together. I'm going to fumble my way through this because I, uh, I don't have any experience doing this at all, um, actually. So we're just going to read the instructions and go through from there so fuel pumps out of the car first thing we do is get a big screwdriver and pop off the float arm actually a little screwdriver pop off the float arm carefully just like that there's the float arm place that over here somewhere okay remove the fuel pumps feed tube from fuel module bulkhead outlet this is the feed tube I'm guessing that's the bulkhead outlet by making a small slit. I guess small slit is kind of subjective. I have to turn it around. I apologize in advance for my big head being in the video again. Try not to do that as much as possible. Might be some gas in here still. I, I tried to empty it out, but that's why I have this big towel on the bench. Just because I'm sure there's still gas in there somewhere. There we go. Alright. So that's off of there. Well that's a lot that's a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. I thought uh for some reason I thought that would be soft. Remove the red CPA lock from the electrical ball head connector. This is the CPA connector, I guess. Stick your screwdriver in there and rotate it. That's what comes out. Piece of cake. Using a small pair of small tip pliers, gently squeeze the locking tabs. Oh, it's one of those. Okay, I need needle nose then. Which I don't have in the garage, of course. stakes is it was supposed to be nice out today like 70, 76 degrees and sunny and what we got instead is like 65 degrees and cloudy and it's been spitting rain so luckily some of this can be done indoors all right so i'm squeezing Squeezing, wiggling. There we go. Outs. Outskies. Okay. Next is using a blade of a small flathead screwdriver to press the locking tabs at either top side of the fuel bucket. Gently slide the fuel bucket out from the upper half of the module by approximately one and a half inches in order to expose the top of the fuel pump. Top of the fuel pump spilling gas okay uh, locate the venturi feed 
right here. Locate the venturi feed tube coming off the brass fitting on top of the fuel pump. Use a pair of flush side cutters. Cut the venturi feed tube directly above the bump. As shown in figure G. I wonder if, uh, that's probably not good that that's so hard. I'm starting to wonder if maybe I need to get a new one of those. I'll have to see. Might have to look into that. Uh, Straight above the bump. I don't have flush side cutters, so this is going to have to do directly above the bump. Makes me nervous. All right, here we go. It's about as straight and as flat as it's going to get with these things. Okay, using the blade of a small flat screwdriver, depress the gray TPA's locking tabs on either side of the black power connector while gently pulling up and out as shown in figure H. Okay, so that's this. I don't think I need a screwdriver for this side. I don't think I need a screwdriver at all. Boy, that one's in there. Oh, wait a second. I'm not supposed to be doing that, I don't think. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Okay. That was dumb. I think what I'm supposed to be doing is... Pushing these in here. Yeah. They're going to have me remove the fuel level, the purple fuel level wires to get them ready to insert into the new plug. No reason to take the plug off that pump because it's replaced with that plug. So, okay, and then I need this paper clip that they give you, which is very nice of them. And I'm sure it would take me an hour and a half to find a, a safety pin or paper clip, paper clip around this place. There you go. Okay. Put it in there, release the terminals, shown in figure T. Okay, so what you're doing is just standard electrical plug pin pulling out. You just take your pin, and if you look at the plug, I know you're not going to see that, but on that side of the, this opening is where the actual connection is, and on this side, there's a tiny little recess that kind of goes behind that plug. You just kind of stick your, stick your pin down in there, give it a little push, and then grab your wire. And um, I think it usually helps if you push in a, on the wire a little bit first before you pull it out. Um, and you also have to make sure you get it unlocked or else it won't come out, obviously. Which I'm having difficulties with this one. Well, it was nice of them to send me this safety pin but it's not just about destroyed it already come on man wasting time Oop. Felt, felt it felt it pop in there a little bit more kind of let it come out okay let's see where we're at here that's disconnected separate top and bottom half of the fuel pump module okay 
little bit of gas in there. Just gonna let that. Sit. I'm really worried about this venturi tube. Oh. Hey, at least I caught an access panel in my trunk. So if it is needs to be replaced, it looks like I can do that pretty quick. Remove the fuel pump's filter sock by pulling it off. It's in figure K. Ooh, this thing's ugly. Oh, there's also a lot of gas in it. I'm just gonna take that right outside. Hmm. Not sure if that was crud or just a, some type of element in there. We'll find out. I'll cut it open later and see what's in there. Uh, unplug the fuel pump's power connector by releasing the locking tabs on either side while pushing up a shonen figure out. So I do need to take this off. There we go. All right, so there's the power connector for the fuel pump. Remove the flex tube from the factory fuel pump by making a small slit. That's down here now. Turn it around. Again, my big head's gonna be in here. Okay, there's that, which is no good. So, Remove the flex tube here and remove the factory fuel pump with its sleeve by sliding it up and out of the fuel module as shown in M. So it actually comes out this way. the fuel pump man feels heavier than the new one okay next step remove the factory fuel pump from its sleeve by pushing out from the bottom if your fuel pump is older the sleeve will have shrunk from gas immersion do not force the pump out if you have the slightest difficulty removing the pump from its sleeve simply make a split down the side of the sleeve as shown in O Let's hope we don't have to slit it. Look at that. Easy peasy. All right, this is going, this is going on the floor. That will not be, hey, that will not be thrown out. I don't know if there's any possible way for me to have that as a backup pump. I was going to put it in like a, um, um, something gas safe, like a, uh, I don't really know. Some kind of container that I could keep in my little lock box in the back of the car with just enough tools to change the fuel pump because I have just enough tools to bleed the clutch and just enough tools to do a couple other things that I could imagine would happen on the side of the road. Uh, but if it's not, then I'm not going to worry too much about it. If I, that's why I have AAA. Okay, note, this will not down, blah, 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 blah. Using a pair of side cutters, trim the opening the bottom of the pump sleeve to the outer edges of the raised ellipse. Okay, so this raised part right here. I hope this is even in the video, to be honest with you. I hope it is. Um, this raised part has to be cut out. It says use side cutters, but I might just use my, my razor knife. Oh, actually, that works pretty easy. Sorry. Okay, so we're cutting. I'm assuming this is to make room for the bigger outlet on that pump. The new pump's got a big, a bigger opening. I think I'm actually supposed to cut more than that. Yeah, I'm supposed to cut out to here. I don't think this has to be 
perfectly neat, but we're going to try. Neat for me is probably careless for other people. <laughs> Sorry, I keep pulling this up. I don't even think it's in view anymore. It's because I can't see. I like helping you guys out, but I want to be able to see better. Oof, that's ugly. This video is going to be a long one. Okay. Well, there it is. It's not the prettiest in the world, but I don't think it has to be. Just get this one last piece off with my razor blade here. There we go. Not as nice and neat as what they have in the picture, but I think it's going to work. So, all right, we're ready to put this sucker in. I guess that's the extent of the disassembly that we need to do. Take that bungee cord off of there. Ooh. Man, that is stiff even when it's new. Okay, put this in here. Fits in there pretty good. Sticks out of the bottom pretty good. Now, I think... I probably should have paid attention to how that came out. Uh, I mean, the sleeve is keyed, so it only goes into the assembly one way. It looks like I got it pretty close. All right, place the Racetronics pump fuel assembly into the fuel. Oh, wait, into the sleeve. Pump is keyed. Oops, all right, so we slide that in. Just like that. That's about how they have it. All right, second side. Just as much on the second side. Insert the pump into its red sleeve as shown in figure S. Well, didn't I just do that? You're killing me. Okay. Press the filter sock. Now, here's a here's an interesting uh, thing here. I noticed my Racetronics box was open wherever I put the box. And there's a, um, a warning on there that says, do not use if this seal is broken. So the seal was broken. And I, um, I immediately called uh, Texas Speed and Performance. That's who I got it from. Great, great guys. I love, I love buying stuff from them. It comes quick. This wasn't supposed to show up till later today. It came yesterday, which isn't anything of them. That's that's more UPS, but they still ship it out quick, so that helps. Uh, anyways, so I called them up and they said, basically no big deal. Apparently, um, Racetronic sent the wrong filter sock out, and um, um, they were just you know putting the correct sock into the boxes. So. But I saw these two things, and, and being a newbie with fuel pumps, I didn't realize that there was a sock inside the bucket and a sock on the bottom of the bucket. So I'm looking at this little round thing going, I don't know where the heck that goes. This goes on the bottom of the pump, directly on the pump, that goes into the fuel bucket. So that's 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 that. I, I was confusion on my part. I had no idea, um, like I said, being kind of a newbie with this kind of modification i didn't know what to expect and i don't think there's any way that this goes on just slides on um obviously i want to make sure it's on straight and on all the way unlike what i have managed i'm afraid of breaking this the sock though man i gotta push really hard Sorry, I know I'm completely out of view right now. 
Just trying to get this, make sure this is on all the way. I know there's something in there. I'm afraid to push on it. I feel like it, I feel like it might be a plastic, like a plastic, um, you know, like a filter, I don't know, whatever, plastic cage right in there. I'm afraid to push on it too hard. Anyway, there it is. She's on there. It's not coming off. Uh, let's see. Make sure this filter sock is fully seated. Gently tap the filter sock on a flat surface. What? Okay. Guess we can do that. It seems a little out of control, but who might argue with the instructions? It's on there. Okay. Place the pump assembly into the lower half of the fill bucket. Fold the filter sock so that the long end is folded up the side of the bucket. Long end. Well, I don't see a long end. That's actually what I took out of there. Had a long end. But the picture shows a round one. So I'm just going to assume that this is just a different design filter sock. I don't really see much that can hurt. Route the Venturi tube out the top of the bucket. U1. Push the two halves together enough to tuck the sock inside, but not so far as to engage the side locks. So this has to be routed up through here. So something kind of like that is what I'm going with. I guess I can pull this stinky thing off. I think. Oops. Hope. Oh. Can I pull that sock off? We'll see. Blew that last. Anyway, okay, uh, push the Venturi tube onto pumped Venturi outlet as shown in figure B. Be careful not to exert excessive side force on the fitting. Make sure the tube is fully seated on the fitting. All right, moment of truth to see if this is actually going to... Still leaking gas. Still leaking. So this goes in here, like so. goes over the wiring. I'm just going to see if that works. There is not much room in here. As a matter of fact, there is no room at all and no way to hold the pump. There we go. There's not much side room on that Venturi nipple. I think I need a new tube. I don't think this is supposed to be that hard. There we go on there it's on there actually went on pretty easy okay okay what's next using a small utility knife gently bend the locking tangs of the level sender okay so it wants us to reset these locking tabs these are the tabs that you um, 
pushed out of the way with your safety pin. Um, if you can see, I'm putting the my knife blade behind and just giving them a little bend. When you they're so thin that when you put your safety pin down in there, it actually it doesn't just push them out of the way; it bends them out of the way, and uh, you need to reset them. Um, insert the violet level sender wires into the black power connector. They are not polarity sensitive. Uh, point it towards the release slots. Terminals will make a quiet click. Check the, check the polarity of the pump wiring as a precaution. Red from the pump goes to cavity B and negative goes to cavity C. So red from the pump should go to cavity B. Okay, that's there. And C. Okay. And then these, these wires here will just click in. And you have to make sure that that locking tab goes to that release slot. And then when you, uh, what the heck, when you insert it, you should hear a little click. Probably in all, it's in a, inaudible to you, but I, I could hear it and feel it. Very, just a very little positive click. There we go. Give them a little tug. Make sure they're in. They're in. Okay. Plug the black power connector back into the bulkhead socket. Make sure the connector locks into place. Insert red CPA as shown. So we gotta put this back in. Okay. And then this is the red lock slid into place. I'm going to pull this QC sticker out of there. <laughs> I don't think that needs to be in there. Okay. Position the pump's flex tube to avoid binding. Place the supplied small crimp clamp onto the steel feed line. Onto the steel feed line. What are you talking about? Got no steel feed line. What is this, a 98? Okay, so here's the clamp. I'm actually going to position it on here first. Um, this thing is so stinking stiff, man. Holy moly. How are you supposed to do this? Like that, I guess? Does that seem right? It's not binding. Okay. Guess we'll find out when I don't have fuel pressure, huh? Using a pair of side cutters, crimp the clamp as shown in figure one and two. Do not use excessive force or you may screw your day up. I guess that's why they give you two. That's tight, like a tiger. Push down on top of module as shown in figure double A in order to engage the side locks which hold the top and bottom halves of the module together. Inspect the tubes and wiring for binding. When the two halves are compressed, the flex tube should tuck up inside the top of the module. If the flex tube binds or touches the pressure regulator, reposition it. The two halves should compress properly in order to be inserted to the tank. So we can go ahead and Push down on this. Okay, we're locked in. This Venturi tube is kind of in the way. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything 
binding or hitting or falling apart. The wiring looks like it's got room. Okay, cool. Uh, slide, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we're done. Uh, slide the tank seal onto the fuel pump module above the level sender, and then lock the float arm onto the level sender by snapping it into lock as shown in Figure AC. So that's this one here goes on here. I'm not going to put this on right away. I want to double check to make sure that the um, should have replaced that sender while I was in here. His fingers look pretty good though. Maybe I'll check the resistance of it just to see. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna. I gotta see. That should. I should be able to replace this. But man, it is stuck on there. Something fierce. Yeah, that's a stock replacement there. What's going on? What's going on? Let's get a screwdriver and see if we can pop this puppy loose. I guess I'm glad that it doesn't just fall right off. But at the same time, it's got me slightly nervous. There we go. A little bit of persuasion. Now I really hope this goes on there because pretty much bent the crap out of this. It looks like it did catch some gook. Some goop there. It said to tap the other one on a flat surface, so I'm going to use this handle of this screwdriver to give it a couple taps. There we go. Didn't hurt anything. Doesn't seem like it's seated all the way. Try to give it a little hope with the screwdriver. There we go. Okay, so there you have it. That's Racetronics fuel pump install. And we're going to hope that that works. Um, I'm hoping to later today maybe do a little bit of a start test on the car. Haven't quite figured that out yet. I have to do wiring, uh, intake, and change the fuel filter in the bottom of the car. And a little bit more wiring. for. Uh, I want to redo some gauge wiring. But we might be able to see if we have fuel pressure. At least I'll know if this fuel pump works. That'd probably be good to figure out rather soon. All right. Thanks for watching.